Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. Hello there, this is KY4BDP Brian for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. And as you can probably tell, we're going to program a radio. So what I've done here to make it easier on you and me is I've got an inset of the radio so you can kind of see what's going on. It's kind of boring right now. And on the big part of the screen, I've got the programming software I'm going to use today, which is called RT Systems. Now, KY4CKP showed you how to use Chirp. Biggest uh, advantage to Chirp is it's free. Biggest disadvantage to Chirp is that it's free, which means you don't get a cable. So you've got to make sure you buy the right cable to go with your radio. And I can tell you, you can buy a bad cable, and, and that's it when you try your hardest to get the right one, and it's still a bad one because they make a lot of cheap imitations from China. And you go to a reputable um, vendor, if you can, to get this cable. Now, with RT systems, let's just double check that, in fact, that's what we're using today, because both these programs look so much alike. It's uh, just to the untrained eye, it doesn't, they, it, they look the same. You'll notice that I am, in fact, using RT systems. They actually have a real address, and they actually have a real website, and when you order their software, you're getting the right cable, all right, and it's always a good cable. They don't sell junk. Um, You'll have some drop-down boxes to choose your radio or your series of radio, and then that will automatically select the right cable. And then when they send it to you, and they've got really fast shipping, um, you're, you're pretty much guaranteed that it's going to work. The other thing that you want to make sure is when you plug everything in, you want to make sure that you're communicating properly on your laptop. And I know a lot of people run into this, uh, depending on how old your laptop is. And uh, Chris and I are IT people by trade, so we've been doing this kind of stuff for years. But... Um, the one thing you want to do is go into Device Manager and make sure the cable is being seen on the correct COM port. Now, Chris showed you how to do this using his, uh, his cable. I'm doing the same thing. I'm just going into Device Manager here in Windows 10, and I'm just double-checking that, in fact, the cable is being seen, and it is on COM3. Uh, and I've already tested that it's communicating with the radio, so I wanted to save you a little bit of time. But you, double, you want to double-check these things, because if you don't, you're going to be troubleshooting that for several minutes, just making sure that you're getting it all good to go. All right, so we're fine. Now, I've got the radio turned on. I've already got the cables plugged in, or the cable plugged in. You can see part of it on the radio side. You can't see the one on the laptop. Take my word for it. We're good. And what we're going to do is we're going to come up here uh, to File, and we're going to go New. All right. Now, the cool thing about this is that when you select New, it's made for this radio. The, the way the software is programmed or coded is for this radio, and it's letting me know that I can do dual band frequencies, or I can do tri-band. And this particular radio, this uh, Bofang, is in fact a tri-band radio. This will do two meters, one and a quarter, and 70 centimeters. So I'm going to pick three. I'm going to do all three because, you know, I'm feeling it. So let's click OK. This is going to give us a new spreadsheet, and we'll also have some additional menu options up here at the top now. We've got Edit, Communications, and Settings. And what we need to do now is bring in some frequencies. Now, before I get into that, you might be wondering, Brian, why do you need to bring in frequencies at all? Why do you need to spend money on a program? And those are great questions. Chirp is free. You can program your radio for free. You just got to get your thumbs going and, uh, you know, pretend like it's uh, texting somebody, I guess. But the downside is, is if you've got a lot of frequencies, it's going to take a while. You got to know the frequencies, the offsets, the tones, and so on. What's great about the programming software is that you can pick your area uh, through uh, an external database, which I'm going to show you in a moment, and it'll pull in those frequencies automatically with all the attendant information, and it saves you boatloads of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to communicate uh, to edit, excuse me, or file. I'm going to go to file. I'll get it right here in a minute. I'm going to go to external data, and I've got uh, three references I can pull from. I'm going to go to repeater book because that's what I'm familiar with, and I believe Chris used this as well uh, when he was using Chirp. But what's really cool is it's going to pull that information from their database, and I don't have to do this by hand. 
I'm also going to pull for a particular area. Now in this particular case, let's say that I'm going to take a trip to Atlanta. I've got to go teach down there. I'm going to drive down in my truck. But when I get there, I'd like to kind of play with some of the uh, some of the frequencies, maybe talk to some people, maybe even join in a net. I know, scary stuff, right? Especially when you only have your technician's license. And what we're going to do is we're going to choose our radius here on the right-hand side for Atlanta. We're going to choose the bands that we want, and because I want three bands, two, one and a quarter, and 70, we're going to click OK, and it's going to go pull those frequencies for me, and boom! I don't have to program any of this stuff. It's already pulled it in. Now, some of these are not useful to me. And you might say, well, what do you mean? Well, it's a Bofung radio. This doesn't do D-Star and this doesn't do Fusion. If I had my Yesu up here, the FT2DR, I could use Fusion, but I can't use those with this radio. So I'm gonna come down to Selected Bands and I'm gonna undo a couple of these filters. DMR, D-Star, and Fusion. And that's going to leave the frequencies that are just plain old frequencies, not digital. Now, you'll notice over here on the left, we've got some rows missing now. If you look, the numbers are no longer consecutive. And if we scroll down, you can see we're looking at two meters, one and a quarter in the 224 uh, frequency range, and then the 70 centimeters. So what's next? You could highlight the top one and use your shift key to select all of them or a few of them at a time. You could click on a row and then hold down the control key and select some, you know, just kind of bounce around and only get the ones that you want. Or you could select them all like I'm going to do. That'll get all of them. And then what I'm going to do is right click and copy. Let's go back over to the blank new screen that we had and we're going to right click and we're going to paste. I don't know how much easier it can be. So typically what you'll do is you'll paste them in. Now, if, uh, if you don't have to do new here, these are the repeater book. I could go back to repeater book and just send these over to the radio. But if I were going to do multiple cities or multiple uh, locations, what I could do is copy and paste in the different localities and build an even longer list up to the maximum number of memories that I've got on the radio. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go up here to communications and we're going to send it to the radio. Now, actually, before I do that, Let's come over here to settings, because not only can you send the frequencies, you can also send radio settings. So you can not only configure it for frequencies, but also settings. Now, I'm not going to change anything here today because we're mainly just interested in the frequencies. And I did go in and change it for my call sign and uh, to show that I have an extra license. That's it. That's all I've done. But there are some additional items here that you could get into if you felt like you had a reason to. We're just not going to do that other than what I've already explained. So we'll close that. And we're going to go to communications. And if things go well, we should see a blinky light on the radio. Now it's going to ask, do we have the radio on? Do we have the cable plugged in? We're good there. So now we can see the green bar moving across the right. It's sending it from digital to analog this time across that cable into my radio. And we're going to find out pretty soon. Now it's also going to reboot the radio. So if you watch the display here on the uh, radio screen, you'll see it black out. It'll come back in. It'll have my call sign in there. Well, it didn't come up with a call sign this time. But uh, you can see that we actually have something in there. But right now we're on VFO. So let's switch over to memory, see if I can do this without hurting anything, and there we go. Let's get it to uh, focus there. We've got some memories in here. Now, if you look closely, we're on memory one, and if you come down to memory one here on the spreadsheet, that's going to be 145.290. Sure enough, that's what we've got there on the top display on VFOA, or in this case, memory A. If I hit my up arrow, this is going to go to memory two. Now, Right now, you can see we're on 145,450, and in fact, it's getting something on 145,450, but uh, if we come down to memory two in the spreadsheet, sure enough, we're good to go. So you can see right off the bat, we've got it programmed, we're ready to go. And if you wanted to do multiple cities, all you'd have to do is just go into repeater book more than once and then use your radius to show uh, how, how much within that city or that area you want to capture and then just copy and paste those in as you get to the bottom of your list. Um, it really isn't any harder than that. And you can save these lists because I've got one for Atlanta, I've got one for Edison, New Jersey, I've got one for Washington, D.C., I've got one for Chicago because I go to these places fairly regularly. 
you can do this too. This is not difficult, and with a little bit of practice, you'll have this down. It's, again, not too difficult at all. N and so now, if you've seen the other video that used Chirp, you'll say, this looks really similar. This is RT Systems doing basically the same thing, but with the confidence that the cable is going to work right out of the box. That's the downside with Chirp. You're going to have to make sure you get the right cable. Um, you'll always get the right cable when you go through RT Systems, and I, I guess that's why I, I like it a little better. But effectively, functionally, they're the same, folks. You don't really have to worry too much about either of these programs in any way screwing it up. It's just a matter of practice. That's all it is. And when you've got like five of these like I do, five of these Bofangs, once you've got it configured on one, like for your local area, you can configure all of them. You just plug in the next one, turn it on, program it. Plug in the next one, turn it on, program it. Uh, and off you go. So let's go ahead and close the video. I think we've got enough here. There's not much to programming, but a lot of people, especially new people when you're a technician, you want to see these videos because you want to use the programs to make it easier to get into these repeaters when you have your technician's license and beyond, of course. I use these just as much, and I've got an extra. So, the, and not to brag, just because once you've been in the hobby a while, you'll continue to increase your FCC license from technician to general to extra that allows you to do even more stuff. So we'll cut that video, we'll cut the video here. This is KY4BDP Brian for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you have any comments, please let us know. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, like these videos, and give us comments, folks. Give us comments down there. Let us know what you'd like to see next. Uh, and uh, click that bell notification so that when we come out with the next video, you'll be the first one to know about it. 73s, everybody.